in this short presentation we will see how to operate a subtrochanteric fracture of femur in lateral position on a simple radio lucent top table. Hello everybody, subtrochanteric fracture is a challenge for orthopedic surgeon and proximal femoral nail is one of the treatment option. We can do this surgery on an orthopedic table or on an ordinary table and one of the best position I have found is to operate them on an ordinary table with a radio lucent top and before that I am going to show few slides in my laptop which shows the position how it is being done. The patient is positioned on a simple table in la lateral position this is the position of the image identifier for the AP of the hip. This is the X-ray tube which is behind the hip and in front one can see the image intensifier. This is the cross table lateral picture of the neck. The image intensifier is near to the hip and the X-ray tube is underneath the table and you can see both the hips are seen overlap with one another. The hip which is nearer to the image and this where the picture will be smaller in size. The hip joint bones will be smaller in size compared to the opposite side weak hip which is near to the x-ray tube. The advantage of operating on a simple table is in the AP you can see the surgeon is not hindered by the CR machine so as in lateral picture so the surgeon has easy access with the CR moving to hip, and, hip AP and lateral quickly without disturbing the surgeon if we don't have a radio lucent top table also a hip AP can be got with the CR perpendicular to the hip to get a AP and by abducting the thigh and by slight movement of the C arm one can get a good lateral picture of the hip. Good morning. Today we are demonstrating a subtrochanteric fracture in lateral position on an ordinary table. Uh, this is the fracture, a subtrochanteric fracture. Normally to do a PFN we normally take an entry from the tip of the trochanter but since we are doing a subtrochanter fracture and using a long PFN we will be taking an entry much more medial to the tip of the trochanter to avoid virus happening at the fracture site. This is the position of the patient on an ordinary table. The CM is positioned for AP picture. Now the CM is positioned for lateral of the hip. Since both the hips are overlapping one another, the one nearer the camera will be smaller in size on the image. Hello. This is the site which we are going to operate having subtrochanteric fracture. You can see that as this hip is nearer to the image intensifier and away from the x-ray tube this is a smaller in size this is the normal opposite hip which is down which looks larger in size okay this is the tip of the trochanter i am putting a anti version caver first this is I am feeling the proximal fragment and slipping in front, just withdraw a little and pierce it to the bone. Okay. You can see this is the lateral picture, this is the fracture site, the posterior cortex of the neck, the anterior cortex of the neck and our antiversion guide wire is brushing the anterior cortex of the neck and this is the shaft of the opposite hip. 
this is the anti version cover which you have put in the ap picture which is brushing the anterior cortex of the proximal fragment this is the anti version guide we have passed now this is the anterior superior iliac spine the tip of the trochanter so i mark these two lines one in line with the anterior superior leg spine another in line with the shaft just above the tip of the trochanter and take the incision bas shoot shoot bas this is the guide pin we have passed which is in the center of the neck parallel to the anterior cortex of the proximal fragment you can see this is the guide pin and it is parallel to the anterior cortex of the proximal fragment we will show the picture in ap now this is the entry unlike the usual tip of the trochanter it is medial to the tip of the trochanter almost from the piriformis fossa now my guide pin is going and touching the lateral cortex i have to go as lateral as possible and parallel to the lateral cortex i'll aim this pin in this direction before starting the reaming yes this guide pin is going too laterally so i'll aim slightly more medially parallel to the lateral cortex shoot now you can see that my guide pin is coming parallel to the lateral cortex and i am not going too medially if i go too too medially the fracture will go into varus so i want to go as lateral as possible once the guide pin position is confirmed enlarge with the centering all pass the solapus leaf and make the canal in the proximal fragment i will rim with the centering all you can see that the anti version guide wire which is more anterior doesn't come in the way of the reaming okay the assistant gives a gentle traction at the knee and the fracture is now reduced and i have negotiated the guide wire easily into the distal fragment for reaming of the distal canal okay now you can see the beaded guide wire from the proximal canal has entered into the distal fragment reaming is done when i am reaming assistant gives a gentle traction so that the fracture is aligned properly okay now i have reamed up to 11.5 this is the 12 mm flexible reamer i am passing now i have passed the exchange tube take out the beaded guide wire plain guide wire and pass the plain guide wire the sleeve and exchange tube is over This is the 11 mm 135 degree nail I have selected and assembled over the jig and passed over the guide wire. You can see that as we have done adequate reaming without hammering, the nail could go very easily. is the anti version guide wire keeping the jig parallel to that i'll do the final seating of the nail shoot see now we can see the nail has been hammered now we can see that the nail has been hammered seeing the inferior calcar the inferior hole is 
parallel to the calcar where the cervical screw will go superior is somewhere in the middle here the second screw will go I am passing the inferior cervical guide wire keeping the jig parallel to the antiversal K wire shoot This is the inferior guide wire. Now you can see it is parallel to the calcar and going in the inferior part of the neck. If I had taken the entry from the tip of the trochanter, this would have gone in the middle or superior portion of the neck. That is the reason in a subtrochanteric fracture, the entry has to be made more medial to the tip of the trochanter. Now I have passed the sleeve for the superior bolt and the trocar to make a hole in the lateral cortex to pass the guide wire. The superior guide wire for the derotation bolt has been passed which is almost in the center, just superior to the center of the neck in AP. This is the lateral picture. This is the antiversion guide wire parallel to the anterior cortex of the neck. We don't see both the guide wires. This is the posterior cortex of the neck. This is the anterior cortex of the neck and this is the place which has been overlapped by the jig with the guide wires indicating that the position of the guide wire in lateral picture is very good. This is only because of the antiversion guide wire which we have put initially. By moving the jig little one can see the lateral picture and the guide wire position in the neck in lateral view. Now the position of both the guide wires have been confirmed. Both of them are very good both in AP and lateral. I will pass the derotational screw first keeping the CM in AP position. Bus. Shoot. Now the amount of drill which has gone inside is 75 mm. So I will select a derotational bolt of 75 mm. This is the 75 mm derotational screw I am passing first. I have rimmed the inferior guide wire with a thinner step cut drill and I am, now I am using the regular step cut drill for the 8 mm cervical screw. This is the step cut drill over the guide wire you can see and this is the superior deep rotation bolt which is at the level of the tip of the trochanter. This is the 8.5 mm screw I have selected depending upon the amount of drilling which has been done. This is the final AP picture of the hip, the derotational screw and the main cervical screw which is subcontrally placed parallel to the inferior cortex of the neck. Both of them at the same horizontal level. Distal locking, you can see the knee is flexed so that it touches the ischial tuberosity so that rotationally the fracture is aligned properly and we are not removed the jig. So keeping it vertical to the ground, the distal locking is done with the CM which will come at the anakali. Now, once the steamer pin is centered over the hole, I am drilling the opposite cortex. Okay. Hmm. No. Yes. Yes. Now we have done the distal locking. I will remove the jig and show the final pictures of the locking. Portiana. This is the final AP picture of the hip on table without the jig and the antiversion guide wire which we had put initially. You can see that the tip of the nail, the tip of the derotation screw and the tip of the cervical screw all are in same line and the cervical screw is as subcontral as possible just about 5 mm from the subcontral bone and it is also parallel to the calcar. The fracture is well reduced and you can see that as we had made the canal only in the lateral 
part of the proximal fragment. The nail is sitting in that portion and it has not gone medially to lead to varus at the fracture site. This is the final lateral picture. The anterior cortex, the posterior cortex of the neck, well reduced fracture. There is no flexion deformity in the lateral view. The screw is the center of the neck. The advantage as you have seen of operating such subtractic fracture in lateral position. This is the entry site after suturing. This is the proximal locking into the neck and this is the freehand distal locking wound. Let's recapitulate the surgery which we had done, the, all the CM pictures. The AP picture of the hip, the lateral picture, this is the affected side with the subtrochanter refracture. The larger hip is the normal hip. The antiversion guide wire being passed parallel to the anterior cortex. This is the AP picture of the antiversion guide wire. Again, the antiversion guide wire has entered parallel to the anterior cortex of the neck. One more view of the same. The guide pin is passed to make an entry not from the tip but it is much more medial to the tip almost from the piriformis fossa and in lateral picture it is exactly in the center of both anterior and posterior cortex this is the guide pin and the guide pin is then further advanced parallel to the anterior cortex in lateral picture and parallel to the lateral cortex in AP picture. Then the centering owl is passed to make a 15 millimeter hole in the proximal femur. The guide wire is passed, the beaded one for reaming of the shaft. Guide wire is negotiated across the fracture site. A flexible reamer is passed to ream the distal fragment. Then the guide wire is exchanged to a simple guide wire and the nail is passed. How much the nail has to be advanced is determined by the proximal interlocking holes in the nail. Here you can see the proximal holes are almost in the level of the lesser trochanter and when we pass the screw it will be parallel to the calcar. This is the close up view. You can see the proximal locking hole in the nail and this will be the direction of proximal locking. Once the nail is advanced sufficiently, the trocar is passed to make a hole in the lateral cortex. This is passed through the jig, then the guide wire is passed. These guide wires cannot drill the lateral cortex. That is the reason a hole has to be made with a trocar and then the guide bar is passed parallel to the inferior cortex about 5 millimeter from the inferior cortex. Then the superior derotational screw guide bar is passed again the trocar is used to make a hole in the lateral cortex. Then the guide bar is passed. This is the lateral picture of the guide bar. The guide bars are masked by the nail and the jig. This is the anti guide where we have passed. By rotating the jig little or by moving the patient either slightly in front or slightly behind making a floppy lateral position one can see the guide wire position in the neck. Here you can see it has not pierced either the posterior cortex or the anterior cortex and its position in the lateral picture. The step cut drill or the proximal guide wire to pass the derotational screw. This is the position of the derotational screw. The step cut drill being passed over the inferior cervical. This is the final AP picture with the jig still in position before the distal locking. Distal locking by freehand technique. Marking of the hole. Then a sharp K wire passed at the inferior part of the hole so that your 
screw will be in the inferior part of the hole in the nail we have dynamization available in the nail this is the final locking you can see that is it is in the inferior part of the nail and the hole is still big enough higher up for further dynamization this is the final ap after the jig has been removed you can see that all the three things cervical screw derotational screw and the nail are in one horizontal position so that both the screw can take the load simultaneously and slide simultaneously this is the final lateral picture anterior cortex posterior cortex and in the center both the screw the cervical screw and the derotation screw is seen and see the reduction there is no flexion deformity the reason is we had passed the guide pin parallel to the anterior cortex this is the pre operative picture and this is the immediate post operative picture the proximal locking and the distal locking this is the lateral picture of the proximal part the nail curved as per the curvature of the femur and well reduced fracture here are some clinical cases a segmental fracture treated with a simple interlocking nail in a lateral position another case of subtrochanteric fracture treated with a long pfn see the nice reduction both in ap and lateral picture these are the close up views of the same one more patient with a abducted proximal fragment treated with a nail a comminuted subtrochanteric fracture again a close nailing has been carried out this is the clinical picture at 8 weeks and the x ray at the same time the function of the same patient at 8 weeks able to stand squat and sit cross legged and this patient came for follow up only after 5 years and this is the consolidation and the lateral picture and the function the right side has been operated squatting and sitting cross legged thank you very much